BLS Basic Life Support is the foundation of everything that we do inside of EMS. We have to get this down. I'm gonna take you through the most important critical concepts of BLS class, so let's get into it. So scene safety is always first. And remember, what we're talking about right here is the adult BLS CPR algorithm. I mean, you go to somebody in cardiac arrest or you are called out someone who is unresponsive, okay? So scene safety is first, scene's gotta be safe. We do that. Now we actually approach the patient. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is check for responsiveness. It's the first thing we're gonna do, right? So if the patient is unresponsive, okay, they're not moving, they're not speaking, they're not responding to any painful stimulus, they're unresponsive completely. That is the first check that they're in cardiac arrest. Okay, there's two more, we're gonna get to in a second. Now in parentheses here, you'll see it says, get help, contact 911, get an AED. Now obviously picture this, when we're working on the ambulance, the two EMT crew, and if we have an AED, we are 911, and we have help. The help is my partner, <laughs> right? So we've checked all this off because we are EMS, right? Now, in BLS class, you're still taught as if you are, you know, a in some scenarios, a lay person. And you should know this anyway. So what if you're out and you're, let's say, at a restaurant or you're out in the mall, for example, or out on a street and someone drops? Well, this is what you would do. You would scene safety, check responsiveness. Then what would you do? Shout and get help. You would call 911, probably put your phone and speaker next to the victim, and then tell someone else to go get an AED while you continue on. Pretty cool? Okay, so now we're gonna go into back to EMS mode. Here we go. Okay, so we're EMS now, and now we've done this. Check responsiveness. Your partner has the AED, you are 911, and you are the help. So now, here we are. No breathing or pulse. We have a 10 second period to check for breathing and check for a pulse. So where is that pulse located? The carotid pulse on the neck is what we're gonna look at. Now, for breathing, agonal breathing, like gasping, the final breathing that someone takes, that's not breathing. We're looking for some, some sort of organized breathing activity, right? Now remember, if the patient is breathing, they can't be in cardiac arrest. They're still breathing, right? So most likely they're gonna have a pulse with that as well, right? So when we think about it, if they're unresponsive, if they have no pulse and they're not breathing, those are the three check marks. Unresponsive, not breathing, no pulse equals cardiac arrest. Now it's adult CPR time, okay? We move down here now. Notice this is all happening within a matter of moments, right? We gotta break it down so you can learn it. Next thing we're gonna do is start CPR. Now, CPR is gonna be our chest compressions, right? So we're gonna start with our chest compressions, or we'll jump right to the chest, start chest compressions. And the 30 represents the chest compressions. The two represents our ventilations, right? So we wanna start providing ventilations, breathing for the patient. We can do that via a bag valve mask, for example, okay? We have our 30 and two start CPR. While we are starting CPR, so let's say you are providing compressions, okay, we're doing the compressions. Your partner in the ambulance is attaching the AED. It takes two seconds to attach the AED. By the time you're going through that first set of you know, compressions, the AED is on and starting to work its magic, right? Now, what do I mean by work its magic? Here's what I mean. Once you attach the AED, the cool thing about the AED, it knows everything that's going on because it's attached to the patient. So it's gonna tell you to continue CPR. It's gonna tell you to check for a pulse. It's gonna tell you to stop in an analyzing rhythm. It's gonna tell you if it's gonna shock or not. So it's kinda gotta help you through the code, which is pretty cool, okay? So what did I write down here? The key things to remember. Obviously, you're gonna follow the AED prompts and shock if advised. Providing one shock and then continuing your CPR, right? Now, I have a quick little tip on that in a minute. We're gonna follow the AED prompts. Of course, the AED is kind of helping us run this code. And then remember, your CPR cycles, how long? They're two minute cycles of CPR, okay? So this, if you have all this down, you're on your way to passing BLS. Let's talk a little more. 
Now, before we move on, I want to just explain something very simply to you to remember to plant in your brain. This is a little bonus material for you. So, if we have a patient and they are in cardiac arrest and they are unresponsive, there's no breathing, no pulse, there's only four rhythms that they can be in. And these rhythms is actually what the AED picks up on. So, there are two rhythms that are shockable, and then there are two that are not shockable, but you're still in cardiac arrest and have no pulse, right? So if we are flatline, that's asystole. That would be, we continue CPR, but we're not gonna shock anybody. It's not shockable. And there's pulseless electrical activity. There's some sort of activity going on, but shocking, it won't do anything. So the AED will just say, well, don't shock, but keep doing CPR. So you can kind of tell what camp you're in, what type of rhythm you're in by if we shock or not. If we shock or, and we're in cardiac arrest, there's only two rhythms we can be in, ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation, right? So a little backstory there about the AED and its shocks. So now let's look at these key points. The first key point is you wanna start compressions within 10 seconds. So we approach that patient, we're checking for where are the big three, unresponsiveness, not breathing, no pulse. Those are the three we're looking for. We got 10 seconds to evaluate for all that, right? That's what we're trying to do, okay? Now, we have star compressions within 10 seconds. That's the key. Next, we're gonna push hard and fast. So we're gonna look at a rate of compressions of 100 to 120 per minute. And now how deep will those compressions be? Well, we're looking at at least two inches for adults, and this is all about adults. Next, we're gonna limit interruptions with compressions, and we're gonna allow the chest to recoil with each compression. There's been a lot of science done about limiting interruptions with CPR. Of course, there's times you have to do that, like, well, I got a shock of the patient with the AED, right. But we really wanna limit and be very, when we're actually switching providers, we wanna be very quick in those interruptions, right? They say under 10 seconds. Now, what else do we have here? Let's move on to ventilations. So we wanna look for the chest rise and fall with our ventilations. And I have a little bonus for you here at the end. The next thing we wanna do is avoid excessive ventilation. Okay, remember, it is 30 compressions and we have two ventilations for adult BLS CPR, okay? Now the final piece, this is not from AHA. I've added this in, which is nothing wrong with this, of course, but it's not on their official list, but I added in is we wanna provide a good seal. No one talked about this enough. I remember being in the OR and when I was doing my paramedic you know, uh, innovations, right? And I remember the anesthesiologist really harping into me, getting really good at BVM and providing that good seal. You know, I remember him telling me that a lot of people, they're just not good when it really comes to the BVM and the seal. They get air shoot at the sides, and that affects the patient care. I have a little bonus homework for you, here it is. I want you to practice, practice, practice. When you're in BLS class, when you're in EMT class, I want you to become the best you can be, provide those BVM ventilations, and really focus on that good seal and that good grip when providing BVM ventilations. So now with that being said, what happens when the paramedic arrives on scene? You're the EMT working with the paramedic. What happens when the paramedic arrives on scene in places an advanced airway. It changes everything. So let me explain. So let's just say here we are, you and your EMT partner are on scene. You're doing your, your BLS, right? It's 30 compressions for every two ventilations. And we do 30 and two, 30 and two. We can move on, right? In two minute cycles, the AED's coaching us, helping us along, right? And we're moving along. That's what we have at the EMT BLS level. What happens? So now the paramedic arrives on scene. Paramedic arrives on scene, intubates the patient, or uses any of the following, an eye gel, an LMA, a King LT, right? Some sort of advanced airway on scene. What happens is we now move to one breath every six seconds for the, remember this is adult, for the adult patient. And we're gonna provide continuous compressions and where there's no stopping for ventilations. We're just gonna continue and we're gonna do 100 to 120 compressions continuously per minute, right? And at this point, the paramedic takes over while looking at the monitor and kind of now to lead the call. So that's how it works when a paramedic gets on the scene and 
then is involved. By clicking in the first link in the description, you get lifetime access to my Video Vault program. The Video Vault includes over 480 videos of content and now holds over 2,000 national registry practice test questions. Also include some really awesome bonuses like worksheets, drug cards that are pre-filled out all for you, community group access to ask me questions and audio files when you are on the go. The video vault will find you no matter where you're at, whether you're an EMR, EMT, advanced EMT, or paramedic student, and my students use this whether you are getting ready for school, in school right now, or getting ready to go pass your national registry exams. So click the first link in the description right now and get yourself lifetime access to the video vault today. I'll see you there.